Call us on your cell phone. Call in very hotline bling. That can only mean one thing. Welcome back to your Monday morning, and it's time right now for the Cutlery Hotline Bling! Sing, 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 sing. sing. <laughs> Now, we all love a good mushroom sauce and a scrumptious mushroom on toast, but where do these delectable fungi grow, and how do they make little mushroom babies, and what are the edible ones, and which ones are poisonous? Do you know all those answers? Well, to answer all of those questions, all of your shroomy questions that you may have, we have uh, uh, Fungi Fundi, Gary Goldman, and avid mushroom forage design Khan in the studio. A very good morning to both of you, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. This is quite a spread, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I've, I've never seen so many mushrooms on one <laughs> yeah. table, but it, there are even more in this book, Gary, that you have uh, co-authored and put together um, that features, what is it called again? Uh, a Field Guide to Mushrooms and Other Fungi in South Africa, where Amazing. you have some, what, 200? We've got 200 species in the book. Um, we could have oh we could have done 600 to 800 species. Sure. I don't know if you've looked through the book, Zaya, but it's, it's like it's an incredible. encyclopedia. I'm so excited. That's amazing. So take us through the, the rationale of, of creating um, a book like this. Well, first of all, I started collecting mushroom books before I started collecting mushrooms. Mm. Mm. I've now got about 100 to 150 mushroom books from around the world. Wow. And I used to reference them every time I used to find a mushroom. Because old mushroom books would say, find yourself a mushroom expert before you consume a mushroom. I never found an expert. <laughs> <laughs> so you made yourself an expert. My, my books were my experts. Yeah. And then I started discovering mushrooms which were not inside South African mushroom books. And, yeah. and over 15 years, that book was put together along with Marika Grezenhout, Dr. Marika Grezenhout. And um, we're very proud of it. And it's been well received. Yeah. And why the fascination with, with mushrooms for you? Where did the love for mushroom foraging and discovering all kinds of information about mushrooms come from? Well, I was, I was very corporate most of my life until about 43. <clears throat> and then I started, um, I stopped smoking and I started walking to the forests, Newlands Forest, mm -hmm. and started seeing fungi and wondered what they were. And as everybody who um, messaged me, uh, they always ask, can I eat this? I wanted to know <laughs> if I could eat it. And uh, that's where the love began. And now I've eaten 29 species from Table Mountain. Um, and, and in around Cape Town, and I'm sure there's a lot more to yeah. still be discovered. So. Yeah. yeah. Zayan, are you, are you at, that, at that level of mushroom foraging yet where you can just like willy-nilly walk into a forest, see a mushroom be like, ah, really I'll not. eat that. <laughs> I know Fresh the one. ones that I cannot eat and I know how to go about identifying and so on. Um, but for example, some of the most common ones, I don't really like them. Yeah, okay. So when I uh, forage for mushrooms, it's usually to do things like making dyes and inks and so on. Okay, mm. all right. So let's quickly start it off at the very basic level of understanding what is a mushroom? A mushroom is its own, um, its own kingdom. It's called the fungi kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, the closest um, kingdom to them is probably the animal kingdom, where it's very similar to um, the chitnin from, um, from seafood like crayfish and crabs. That same ah. texture is what mushrooms are made up of. Mm -hmm. They're Earth's decomposers, they break down everything. So if we didn't have fungi in the world, we wouldn't be able to walk in the forests and uh, because all the fallen trees and fallen branches wouldn't be decomposed and oh, would wow. still be in the way. So fungi do have a, a purpose yeah. um, on the planet. Where do, you, where do they generally grow? I mean, they, they come in all different shapes and sizes, so clearly they don't all grow in the same patch of grass or land mm. or mud or wherever it is. So or, where, time. Where, or, or time. Or time. Yeah. What? So Please it's the beginning of season when in Cape Town, let's just put Cape Town as an example. In Cape Town, when initially you have the first rainfall, which is any time between um, March and May, yeah. um, two weeks afterwards, mushrooms start coming out. Um, I like to find the mushrooms in the forests, um, whether it's oaks or, um, or uh, pines yeah. or poplars, and I find in those particular environments where those mushrooms symbolically work with those types of trees, yes. they won't grow anywhere else. And of course, you've got the mushrooms which will grow in the fields and mushrooms which will grow mm -hmm. um, even in Fainbos. I find yeah. a morale mushroom now, which um, is edible and it only grows in springtime. So it's, they all have their own little different seasons. Yes. So mushrooms are seasonal, but um, if the right conditions occur, whether it's in, over Christmas time where it rains, um, and it's enough moisture, you're going to find that you will still get certain mushrooms coming out. Yeah. I don't know if this is the right, the right biological term, but how do, how do they propagate? How do, they, how, do how, they, do they, how do they spread? How do they make little <laughs> mushroom babies? You go from one mushroom and then the next thing, wah! I think just also to, to say that 
Mushrooms oh. exist at all times. Well, not mushrooms, but the, the, the bodies that mushrooms grow from. Oh. So we think of mushrooms as the fruiting bodies, the sexy parts of the mycelia that exists in the soils and the trees and everywhere. And so the mushroom babies are when the mycelia are, are, are ripe. Yes. to release and, and make more when they do this through spores. Yes. Kind of like how uh, flowers make fruit and make seed and so mushrooms in a similar way. Wow. Well, in a nutshell, the fungal organism is underground normally mm -hmm. or in, in a log or in some form of substrate and the mushroom is just the fruit. So you see it as the tree and the fruit. Okay, all so at once. Tree is always there. Fruit only comes out when conditions are right. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating world indeed. And you can look at the spread and just, just that on its own is enough to boggle the mind. But we will be finding out uh, more about it when we come back uh, very shortly. Uh, and of course, there's an opportunity for you to win a copy yeah. of this field guide to <laughs> mushrooms and other fungi in South Africa, then uh, all you've got to do is go onto our Expresso Morning Show SABC3 Facebook page and reply to the competition post over there by sharing your favourite way to enjoy mushrooms. How do you like to mm. do it? Recently, for me, it's just, just adding it to a scrambled egg mm. or, or an omelette, anything. Breakfast. 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 Mushrooms meal. and breakfast, a marriage made in heaven. But uh, do stay tuned. We'll be back with Gary and Zayan very shortly on the Culinary Hotline. Bling! Zing! 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 Call us on your cell phone. Culinary Hotline Bling! That can only mean one thing. Thanks very much, Tubsy. It's time once again for the Culinary Hotline Bling! Zing! 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 And we're getting in there this morning with Gary Goldman and Zayan Khan. We're talking all things mushrooms and we're learning about the wonderful world of this fungi that we love to enjoy. Some of us on toast, some of us with our eggs at breakfast, wh whichever way you like to enjoy it. Um, so let's quickly talk about uh, the, the kind of mushroom you can eat. Typically the, the, the species that you can eat that are safe, especially if you are looking to become a forager? Wild mushrooms. Wild mushrooms, yes, not the ones you pick from the, the shelves. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is a porcini. It's not a very nice looking porcini, but porcini is what people look for. You can dry it. Um, I wouldn't dry any other mushroom except a porcini. Uh -huh. um, Why is that? Because porcini's got the flavor, it's got, it's got the smell. Mm. I'll, I'll give you an example. You grab a little, if I just little clean little this off. It smells amazing. Oh, it's a typical mushroomy smell. Yeah. You got can it? you smell that? No, fresh, when it, when fresh. It, fresher it is, the more you can smell Ooh. it. A porcini is, um, is a mushroom which has a polypore under, oh, the, wow. Look at under that. the cap. A polypore under the cap. Um, you would remove the polypore if you were going to fry up the white meat. And um, you could dry the polypore and you could make a powder out of it. Or you could dry the porcini and Italians basically say that if there was a mushroom season that lasted 365 days, you would still find the commodity of dried porcini because the flavor intensifies Good when you, and wow. it's, a, it's a commodity on its own. Fantastic. Um, when you're making a soup or whatever you're making, you use a little bit of water, it's about 750 milliliters of water to about 30 um, grams of dried mm. porcini. The flavor you get out of the water is a soup in itself. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, wow. it's a very, um, very sought after mushroom. So, porcini is one that you could definitely uh, find on your wild foraging escapades. Mm. Under else? certain kinds of trees. Under um, certain kinds. Oaks, uh, pines, those, those kind of trees. Okay. Pine rings are the other one that people find, and it's the most prolifically found mushroom in South Africa because the features of this mushroom are so unique. The one being that when you cut through its stipe, its stalk, you have this instant pineapple ring which forms a saffron milk. And you can see the saffron oh, wow. color of the milk. What? Unique to this mushroom, no other mushroom in South Africa will give you that milk, mm. um, that orange milk. Uh -huh. um, uh, those are two of the edibles. Um, mm -hmm. Poisonous wise, there's, um, we only found one of the poisonous yesterday and that's the old panther. This is the panther. Wow, which, um, it even sounds dangerous. Yeah. Which basically, you eat five of them, you could die. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so when you see it, I mean, it, it, typical markings, so you're looking for this kind of spotted top. Um, He's and confused what else? with this one here, which is the, um, which is the blusher. Mm -hmm. And they look very, very similar. The difference being, and I saw in a Scandinavian book, that a panther never blushes. So he will always be snow white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There and a panther, a, a blusher would always blush somewhere. Somewhere on him, you would see blush. Um, great mushroom. Uh, Germans, German friends of mine 
normally phone me when they found a lot of porcini and they want to know if I found blushes and they would swap the blushes for my porcini. Well, they would give me their porcinis for my blushes. So Why would they do that? Because they don't know. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hopefully you advise well, now them. They you advise them. Now they do. Yeah. What about this one over here? Is that also one of the this inedible? Is, this is very edible. edible. Oh, they're I was edible. saying earlier on about seasonal. This mushroom, he's a very, a very old one. It's not looking great. He's mm -hmm. lilac in colour. He's called the wood bluet. Um, uh, Clitosiab nuda. He's fantastic to eat. <laughs> First time I ever found these. I gave them to the Biscamore Food Market, who sold six kilograms in the first 20 minutes. They were open to all the French people. They know what it is. It's called Pied Blue. It's cultivated in France. So it's blue, blue, right? Like a lilac it's blue. It's like a blue. It's, it's purpley, lilac sexy. blue. It's got a lovely aniseed mm. smell. Yeah. Edible when cooked. If you eat it okay. when it's raw, you might get a little bit of upset stomach. So okay. you always cook it. <laughs> Well, I guess it's it's like most things in nature. The, the color of um, the mushroom kind of indicates whether you're safe or not. But, um, Zayan, yes. you make a beautiful, what, a mushroom biltong? We are making mushroom biltong, and it's not you're just for the vegans. Me. It's something that everybody loves that I give it to. Okay. Um, and we have some if you'd like to try over here. So this recipe that I've shared with everyone, and if you SMS, you'll get the recipe as yes. well. Yes, eat to 33728. Exactly. So I think this one is the one that's this recipe, and then this one is a little bit sweeter. So you can add lib. I'm adding some Worcester sauce, some soya sauce, to some uh -huh. blachang, to some chutney. And so you want it to be a little bit, um, you know, the, the, the chutney can be honey, it can be sugar, here's some crushed ginger. And this is not made with a panther, right? This is, this is not this made is with a panther. No. Those are mixtures See. of shiitake and uh, portobello mushrooms and white mushrooms. We've got well. some ginger powder, some garlic powder, well. and some onion powder. My palate is pleasantly delighted. And, and the trick with one. this is that you want to let it marinate for at least five hours, but it's better if it's overnight because mushrooms need to soak in every single spore of well, flavor. It tastes like biltong. <laughs> it's so weird. And it's not. And it's got that meatiness to it, ne? Wow. Okay, here you go. And to that, to thin it out, we add some vinegar. It can be any vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and this is just what lets the flavor imbibe into the cells of the mushroom. That is extraordinary. Wow. I can't believe it. Okay, SMS the keyword E to 3378. So what you do, you get your mushrooms in there. Mm -hmm. They'll absorb. Overnight, and then you want to dehydrate them, and you can do that on low setting in your oven overnight, 75 degrees or 50 degrees. If you have a dehydrator, even better. If you have um, a vehicle, access to a vehicle, in the summertime on a hot day, roll the windows up, Put some, make sure the car is clean. Yes. Put some uh, baking sheets or some trays on the dashboard and just lay the mushrooms in and let them dry. Look at you. Easy access. You don't I mean, need fancy equipment. if you're going camping, equipment. that's exactly what you do. Make you know your what own I mean? Very impressive. Wake up in the morning, <laughs> forage some of those beautiful mushrooms. You've got your spices and stuff with you. Anyways, lay it the on the dashboard. For the Boom, and you are done. What do you think of this this biltong recipe? I like it. Yeah. I wish I put the recipe in my book. <laughs> 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 Speaking Next of one. the book, uh, if you are a fan of these delectable mushrooms in all their different uh, shapes and sizes and you would love to win yourself a copy of the Field Guide to Mushrooms and Other Fungi in South Africa, then reply to the competition post on our Expresso Facebook page and uh, share what's your favourite way of enjoying mushrooms. And of course, remember the T's and C's apply and can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. We'll be back again with more fungi knowledge here on your feel-good breakfast show on the culinary hotline bling sing sing sing, sing. shroom it's my feel good breakfast show <laughs> call us on your cell phone culinary hotline bling that can only mean one thing it can only mean one thing when you tune into your feel-good breakfast show at this time it's time for the culinary hotline bling sing 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 and we continue on our mushroom journey. Uh, this morning we've been learning all about this delicious, sometimes poisonous and deadly fungi. Uh, <laughs> but that's exactly why we have the expertise of Gary Goldman here. Of course, he is the author, co-author of this beautiful book, Field Guide to Mushrooms and Other Fungi in South Africa. And Zayan Khan showed us how to make a beautiful mushroom biltong. Mm -hmm. If you never ever thought it possible, SMS the keyword EAT to 33728 so that you can try it out. Uh, got a, uh, a comment on Twitter. 
from Nosindu, who said, Morning, um, they grow lacquer here in rural areas after thunderstorms. Can I cook them and toss them or throw them in my toss salad? Um, and she's talking about mushrooms, but she's not being very specific, and that's a dangerous thing. You have to know that each mushroom's got its unique traits, yeah. and that's what makes it that mushroom. So you cannot just think that all mushrooms are edible, you will die. Yes, you might potentially die, yeah. so be careful. Don't just pick it up off the ground and, oh, we saw it on Espresso and they were making biltong. <laughs> and then, we, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it could end up very, very badly. Rather get yourself this guidebook and then know exactly what it is that you're putting into your mouth. Daphne uh, said, I would like to know more about exotic mushrooms, please. Is that once again a very generalized statement? That's a generalized mm. statement. Exotics are cultivated mushrooms from China. Mm -hmm. Oysters, uh, king oyster or um, orangey or nokis, um, shiitakes, they're all cultivated mushrooms, exotics. That's, yeah. where, they, that's where, the, where the word exotic comes yeah. from. Most of them are medicinal. Yeah. They're very good for can anti-cancer or, wow. or um, anti-cholesterol. And there's a whole range of things that can be yeah. used. There. A wonderful thing that we were chatting about during the break, the fact that we were talking about referencing the Amazon fires, uh, the fact that a lot of the world's medicine comes from plants derived in the Amazon, but we only know about 1% of the plant species in the Amazon. But then even further than that, you were saying... Yeah, that's um, a guy like Paul Stamets is saying that mm -hmm. there are more medicinal mushrooms than there are plants which are giving you medicinal properties in the Amazon forest. And so we don't even know how, yeah. not, not even just they haven't even a touched on, the on that. that That's incredible stuff. Johnny Graham says, how do I identify non-edible mushrooms? Is there a general rule? rule? There's no general rule. You just got to know the traits of that mushroom. Yes. Example, these two here. Mm -hmm. The one is edible, the one is poisonous. It can kill you. So the difference being the one blushes. That's how you would know the difference. Okay. Um, they look almost identical to the to the um, untrained eye. Yes. Tell me about this little nifty uh, thing that one should have when you're foraging. Because if you want to be going out there and picking up mushrooms... That's, and a, you know, that's a spore print. A spore print. Yeah, what so is a spore print and why is it important? It's important to do a spore print because when you're identifying a mushroom, every mushroom um, genus as such mm -hmm. has a different spore print colour. So you may find that a poisonous mushroom uh, may have white spores, so you would look at its white spores, mm -hmm. and then you would go and look which mushrooms had white spores, and you'd be able to uh, file it down to maybe 10 to choose from. Mm. Whereas if you're just looking at the mushroom, you don't know the spore print color, it's advisable to do a spore print. It does tell you in the book how to do a spore print. But that's basically taking the cap and laying it... Laying it onto two pieces of paper, mm -hmm. um, one light colored, one dark colored, Put that over it, put a container or something over the top of that, a bowl, yeah. and leave it for about 12 hours overnight. Okay, and that'll give you a spore print. Yeah. And within this book, as you'll see, um, each mushroom has its own spore print as well? Spore colour. Spore colour, excuse mm -hmm. me. There it is, unknown. And like all kinds of information that you're getting. I think, is this the panther that I just spotted? That's, no, that's, that's the excelsa. It's is also it? called the um, Europe's false brush, bl blusher, it's wow. a false blusher. It's See, edible. That, that's it's edible. why it's so important to have that. Yeah. So, Zion, uh, what do you have for us over there? We're going to make some kebabs, another thing for the potential bride. Uh -huh. um, and these are, tell us again what these kinds of mushrooms are. This is the um, granular stalk billet, small ones. And then some shiitake um, also. Shiitakes as well, yes. Yeah, and it's a very simple recipe. You've got your balsamic vinegar. Again, vinegar is important because it lets all the flavor into the mushroom. Some olive oil, some garlic, of course, mm -hmm. and then we We've got some um, thyme and basil, but you could substitute for most herbs. If you wanted to also, you could put a little bit of sugar or honey in there, depending lovely, on, lovely, your, lovely. on your palate. And you want to marinate that for at least also, at least a couple hours, just yes. to get all the flavor. And then make sure that your skillet or your pan or the bra is hot, hot, very, hot, very because hot, this yeah. is mostly moisture. If it's not hot, it's just going to release all that moisture. So this is baya baya varam. And you want to just... Lovely stuff. Have you um, drenched your, your, your skewers in some water so that they don't burn? Not yet, because this is just the pan. So okay. if you're doing it on the fire, on the fire where there's open obviously. flame, then make sure that you soak your skewers. Fantastic. Stuff. Kebab sticks. And then just let it go for a little bit until you see and you can smell that it's done. Okay, wonderful stuff. All right. SMS, uh, that keyword that's on your screen right now to 33728. That's dish to 33728. And we'll send you the ingredients list as well as a link to the recipe. Gary, thank you very much. Zayan, thank you thank very, you. very much. Thank you. It's been a wonderful journey in the world of mushrooms, and we learned so, so much. And I hope that you 
found it enlightening too. In fact, if you'd like to educate yourself even more on mushrooms and stand a chance to win a copy of this, the field guide to mushrooms and other fungi of South Africa, then reply to the competition post on Expresso's Facebook page and share what is your favorite way of enjoying mushrooms. Remember that T's and C's apply and can be found on our website. Before we go, I have to say this. Uh, why did the fungi leave the party? Oh dear, why? Because there wasn't mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a break. <laughs>